How come I'm not already smoking the cigar fingers? You were busy working. That's ridiculous. Work is for suckers. Oh, you got that right. Suckers work. Us. We should be able to spend our days smoking cigars and our nights smoking cigars and drinking bourbon and then drinking more bourbon and smoking more cigars. Isn't that our job? Oh, that's right. My mistake. It's Eat, Drink, Smoke. I'm Tony Katz. That right there is America's favorite amateur drinker, Fingers Malloy. It is weird that we repeat anything. In this case, we're not repeating cigar. It's an all-new cigar. But I now get to say for two weeks in a row, Brazilian Araparaca wrapper. Better you than me. It is from Christoph, the guardrail. The oddly, oddly built Robusto in, in my uh, view. This is five and a quarter inches, fingers Malloy, by 54, which means it's five and a quarter inches long. <laughs> That always makes Fingers Malloy laugh. And the ring gauge is a 54, the diameter of the cigar, or how thick it is around. Tee. Again, with the laughter. Uh, a Robusto is five inches. Five and a quarter is just a little bit of interesting play. Uh, the 54, that's uh, pretty standard uh, in, in, in that Robusto size and really starting to be a little bigger in the mouthfeel than I like to go. But this comes from Christoph. This comes from Glenn Case. I mean, the whole story about getting into a motorcycle accident and the guardrail protecting him. And he spent weeks in, in, in a hospital. So he made this cigar. Did this happen recently? I, this happened. No, this happened a few years ago. This happened a few years. Yeah. Every, Glenn's got a story for nearly for nearly anything. Um, crazy good fun life. What I dig about this first, uh, if you remember correctly, we talked about the Brickhouse Maduro last week and that has this uh, a rapper rocker rapper christoph makes big smokes chris uh, the, the pissed off christoph the vengeance certainly they make lovely smokes the cameroon things like that the sumatra has has an interesting uh level of flavor to it this not only is dominican the binder but it is dominican and zimbabwe in the wrapper which is super neat. Uh, the guys over at Cigar Coop, cigar-coop.com, have a lovely, lovely review of this that really gets into some good detail. What I love about so much of what Glenn does is the homage to, to the early days, the pigtail wrapper, the closed foot. So a pig, I'm sorry, pigtail cap. I said pigtail wrapper. I apologize. A pigtail cap is, is the cap, right? That's the end that you cut. And it looks like a little curly cue. Looks like a pigtail. The objective there is to be able to just bite it off. You bite it off and then you smoke it. Now, some people will tell you, well, that's the only way to have a cigar. The true cigar aficionados bite off uh, the cap. No part of that is true. Sorry, Guy Fieri. I apologize, Eric Espinosa. You, I don't mind you doing it, but it isn't the only way to do it. Your cigar, you do it the way you like it. The end, fingers boy. You... You you are a you are the 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 father Brady of our time. You know what I like to do, Tony. Nothing I would like advice. I like to make the complex simple, and you do. But the shaggy foot, the closed foot, I love the most. This is when you have a little more wrapper, and instead of cutting it straight when you cut the foot end of the cigar, the foot end is what you light on. You kind of let you kind of do it like the pigtail, except there's a lot more of it. And so what you want to do? Don't get rid of that. Light it up, light it up. It's 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 a wonderful kind of experience. Now you got to spend a little more time with it. Now you're getting even more of that wrapper on that first draw as you're bringing it into the cheeks. So there's a whole unique experience that takes place that you're getting more of this wrapper. You're able to bring it through. You're getting that flavor, and it kind of sets the tone for uh, the whole cigar but fingers you're not even waiting for me i'm still lighting mine up you're already smoking what do you got off this bad boy well first of all the hand by the way i called it a bad boy yeah you did because it is a bad boy i mean you have this in your hand first of all it, it's it's a tank it is right it's beefy uh a lot of heft it feels really good in the hand uh i just lit this and right off the bat uh there's a little bit of spice uh a little bit of chocolate I'm interested to see how this continues uh, to probably change over time, but that's all I'm getting right now. But I just lit the thing, Tony. Yeah. Um, I think that when, when you're, when you're, first of all, when you're dealing with a Christoph cigar, you can expect for a, a, a multiplicity of them to be big. There, 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 there's no question there that there is size, but uh, I'm just getting started. 
Um, there is an absolute wood note right off the bat going with a bit of uh, of that spice, but that spice is not heat. That spice is sweet. Mm -hmm. So is that um, more of a an allspice, a baking spice, whatever that 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 is? I don't know yet because I've just started. But you are right about the feel. And how about the look? That wrapper is absolutely gorgeous, almost into a, a, a deep black. It is not a gritty wrapper that I happen to love, but not overly oily, just the right amount. You can glide right across it, but it's not necessarily, the leaf is not necessarily smooth. <clears throat> everything about it, everything about it is like, this is, there, there, there's just an essence of cigars here, an essence of what the leaf should be, an essence of what the old school should be, an essence of those those kind of wonderful flavors uh, that th this kind of wrapper can bring, and certainly that th this mix of Dominican and uh, the the binders and and some of those fillers can bring. I just like the idea of what I'm smoking even more than what I'm getting off it right off the bat. Yeah, and. I'm drinking this right now, or I'm smoking this right now. I've paired it with some coffee and some water. Right now, I... There's my water. Huh? Oh, there's your water right there. Uh, the coffee is having an influence on the cigar uh, a little bit. It, but So I'm trying to figure out right now if I'm getting the coffee off of the actual coffee or if there's some coffee notes off of the cigar in the first third. I th and and coffee is 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 interesting because you you view coffee, or most people view coffee as as you know how they make it in the morning there's cream there's sugar right there's coffee coffee is 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 bean coffee is is a fruit there do you get any berry notes right are you getting that kind of flavor that is also coffee make sure you try it with black coffee make sure you try it with espresso make sure you try it with a french press make sure you try it all those ways to really really get an understanding and then pull out your notebook What'd you eat today? What'd you drink today? We're kind of overcast here in Indianapolis, Indiana today as we record a Blend Bar Cigar, blendbarcigar.com. Uh, and then break it up. First third, second third, final third. In your mind's eye. And what are the flavors you're getting from each third? When you go back to the cigar a month from now, two months from now, six months from now, you do it again. Compare the notes, see your through lines, and that's what you got from the cigar. That's where your palate is with the smoke. And you could probably guess that this is a great pairing with a cup of coffee. I mean, they they work really well together right now. And, uh, you know, part of it, too, is we are having some wild weather changes here in central Indiana. It's 65, 70 one day. The next day, uh, it's 35 degrees outside. Uh, this <laughs> this is a comfort pairing, Tony. Right. Is it? Yeah, that's well, what it is. As far as comfort food goes, uh, this is like a comfort pairing. It's a cigar, a cup of coffee on a on a chilly spring day in central Indiana. That's what I'm going with. Yeah, it's it, it's it's a it's a nice uh, piece right here. Uh, the Christoph guardrail. I'm looking forward to kind of getting into it, really understanding um, where it goes. And we got to get into price as well. Fingers Malloy. And I, I will bring that to everybody uh, coming up. Or should I? I'll, you know, what? I'll leave you with this. I'll leave you with this. Is it in your humidor for eight dollars and fifty cents a stick? You tell us at EatDrinkSmokeShow.com. The Christoph guardrail. We're back from the Premium Cigar Association trade show, and it was a time. It's Eat, Drink, Smoke. I'm Fingers Malloy, along with Tony Katz. Tony got to sit down and have a conversation with Michael Herklotz. It's more like a stand. It's more like a lean. It's more like a standing lean. A Ferry Otago. Right. Michael Herklotz. And shockingly, this conversation had nothing to do uh, with how you dress on an airplane. Yes, it did. Yes, it did. Wait a second. I was there. Fingers up. Pretty sure it totally had to do with how I dress on an airplane. Well, what did you guys talk about? Uh, oh, we talked about suits. We talked about cigars. We talked about the business. We talked about passion. We talked about all the good things, Fingers Malloy. That's what we talked about and how much we love you. Michael Herklotz, Ferry Otego. This is it. The man is 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 legend. I was going to say it's been a year, but it hasn't been a year. It has not been a year. It's been, what, eight months? Um, I I'm doing the Summa right now. Smart man, me which too. Which has, um, you want to talk about, for everything that you've got, to bring back the timeless line and it's not Sherman days, the Metropolitan, and, and launching Ferry Otego as you have, this seems to be the cigar that's most connected with you these days. Talk to me about the Summa. Summa um, is... Summa in Latin is a 
a synthesis of a body of work, right? That's what sumo means. And this really was intended to, in some way, synthesize and represent what is sort of my style of, of blending. Um, and you can look at it just within Ferriotego, Elegancia Generoso, and then Suma in the middle. But I think you can also look at it as kind of a through line with all the work is this, this relationship of um, flavors with body and being able to deliver on a body that is medium to very full all these different flavors that hopefully present an op- an element of surprise. Mm-hmm. You know, if you look at Elegancia, for example, that body is so big on flavors that are so light. You know, that's unique. On the Generoso, the the you have this intense, spicy, earthy experience on a body that's creamy. And then so Suma really kind of lives in the middle. It's it's fudgy, it's decadent, it's got great body it's got um uh it it stimulates some level of saliva so your palate is balanced so for me suma and suma's core so unlike elegancia and generoso suma is core four sizes made throughout the year and it just it really um it really embodies not just what we are but also hopefully signals where we're going and what's to come it's a long answer. Sorry. Well, no, it, it, it's it's your answer, right? To, to hear you discuss your connection to how you thought this through, I think is, is part of the story. When you talk about core collections, things that are always available from Ferry Otego, it, that's different than what we see a lot of the one-offs and the special thing for this and the special thing for that. Is that marketing or is that, hey, some tobaccos are available for this moment. I can create this thing. Is it more of a marketing ploy or is it more of an opportunity taking advantage of conversation? The one-offs? Yeah. I, look, I don't want to speak to other companies and their philosophies. I can speak to our company and our philosophy. I believe that when you create a blend, you are committing to preserve that experience. That's, that's what the industry is built on. Right. A limited here or something special there is, is great, but... But we're building, Ferry Otego is building a brand and a company. And we are not going to do that one little unique project rapid fire at a time. So uh, we use limited editions for celebration. We use limited editions to try out new blends or to use unique tobaccos. But core is king. And we are in this meme culture that is exhausting, you know? I mean, like this crypto world, you, you have all these coins that go from, uh, you know, they have this weird value and then all of a sudden there's no value and then you're on to the next thing. It's like, well, what are you building? They're not building anything, right? How can you have something that was worth X and is now has no liquidity at all? That's not building anything. I don't like the mean thing. I like, I like core blue chip, Stand behind, depend on it forever. That's how we're going to build Ferry Otego in retailers around so the country. A, but that's a value conversation. Is that is that you as a, as as a person, or is that the the life uh, from the, the the early Davidoff days for you, the Nat Sherman days for you? Was that built into you from those from your experiences, or is that a kind of no? This is who I am. I'm not chasing it. I'm going to deliver, is- and I'll take the slow, steady growth. Thank you. Isn't that the same thing? I mean, I am what I've become over those 20 years of nine years with Davidoff, nine years with Nat Sherman, learning from peers in the industry, learning what they do that I love and what they do that I don't love, right? And eventually, the whatever I am at this point is a consequence of my 25 years in, dude, 25 years this year, isn't that, Bob? Right. 25 years in the industry. How old are you? 43. Really? You look terrible. I do. I do. I look awful. It's awful. But I started when I was 19 and here we are. But I, it, back to your question. It's a, it's a, it's a very deliberate choice. If we're going to invest our time and our money in this family business, that's now 30 months in market, how are we going to make the greatest impacts to ensure that people understand what we're doing, 
believe in what we're doing um, and can confirm that over and over and over and over again, that is with CORE. Timeless, Metropolitan, Eleganza Generoso Summa, CORE is king. So looking out at, at, at 2024, looking out at the business, and, and certainly the Premium Cigar Association show is early this year, taking place in March as opposed to uh, in, in, in the summer. The COVID boom was nice. Created some great opportunities, created some challenges in terms of getting product and, and, and everything else. 2024's economic outlook still shows inflation and a series of other things, and people have used up whatever savings they had. Um, is, is the cigar industry getting ready for a little bit of a downturn? I think the cigar industry already experienced its downturn, and I think we're, we're in, a, in a nice, flat place for a moment. Um, the indications, just looking at import numbers, would suggest that, that we've kind of, we're in a pretty safe place. But the, most of the, if you look at what happened, it was really a perfect storm. You had a COVID boom of, of demand with an inability to supply because of restrictions. And then people kept buying because there was a shortage on inventory. And so there was just this incredible backlog of back orders. So now factories are ramping up to fill back orders. Right. And then everything shipped. So everything shipped as everyone went back to work. And now all of a sudden there was plenty of supply, but the, the available demand is starting to diminish because there's less time for people to enjoy the cigars that they love because they're back to work instead of working in their backyard eight hours a day. Then gas went to $12 a gallon. Interest rates are 42 or whatever. I mean, you know, and all of a sudden now it's like close. we have to pull back. And so there has just been this, and we're over inventoried mm -hmm. all over the United States, which caused factories to be distressed which means we have to move volume faster in the United States. So there's been a lot of discounting, a lot of stuff happening. So this has been a very unique six months, eight months, but it's nothing that our industry hasn't been through before. And there is an economic graph in the world that doesn't go like this. And usually when you, when you do this bit and then come down, you're higher than you were before, before it spikes back up again. And that's where we are. So as a as a new business, uh, I have nothing but optimism in my windshield. People want to learn about Ferriotego, where do they go? Ferriotego.com. You can go to uh, Instagram, Ferriotego, Facebook, Ferriotego, Twitter, Ferriotego, Cigars. Now X. It's Michael Herklotz right there. Love you, bro. Oh. And Fingers. Shout out to Fingers and Sarah, too. Thank now, you for this. Find everything we do on our website, eatdrinksmokeshow.com. This guardrail from Christoph. It is smoking well, a touch uneven, but the flavor is there. But I, I don't know, Fingers, if that's a coffee flavor. I get your point. There's something there, and I get that wittiness, and, I, and I'm, I'm getting that, that little bit of, of, of spice, which I think is more of, a, more of an all-spice kind of thing as opposed to a heat spice. And there's even something a, a little bit... Um, I don't know if that's leathery working for me, but I don't know if I get coffee. I don't know if I get coffee. What I get, I like. It's Eat, Drink, Smoke. I'm Tony Katz. That is Fingers Malloy. Find everything at eatdrinksmokeshow.com. Uh, um, I, 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 there's nothing here not to, not to enjoy. Um, the, the, the flavors are are very, very well pronounced. They're mixing together. What is interesting is that I was expecting a much stronger feel from the cigar. I'm not getting it for all of its look, and it looks just plain old angry. Um, this place is a medium, Fingers. I would agree with you there. Uh, you know, it's funny. When we were talking earlier, I couldn't figure out if it was uh, the coffee from the cigar or if it's just the coffee that I'm drinking that's that's influencing uh my thoughts on the cigar and I'm still there when it comes to that I'm still getting a little bit of chocolate that spice is kind of it's turning away from a spice to more of a pepper uh I could totally see what you're talking about as far as as a, a wood I'm almost getting a little bit of an almond off of this 
Uh, um, or, uh, if, if, if I'm going to suggest that you can get something from the coffee that could be fruity, I would easily understand that you could get something from the coffee that could be nutty. Um, although I'm don't, I can't say that I'm totally getting that at, at, at the moment. I cannot say that I am. But the fact that we're having this discussion and we're, we're getting uh, several things uh, from this cigar, uh, the construction is great. The burn has been even. It haven't really had to touch it up at all. Uh, with all that in this conversation, you couple that with the price point. What would you say, $8 a stick? So it, it really does depend. So sometimes I take a look at, some online pricing and I say the box is 20. I divide, I come up with a number. If you're buying a single, sometimes it'll be a little bit more expensive sure. than if you're buying the whole box. Say it's nine fifty a stick. Sure. For, for me, I think it's still in my humidor. Right. I mean, everything that we've experienced so far uh, and the fact that it has a, a few different things going on, uh, with the, the, the flavors and uh, how it's hitting the palate and the construction and everything. And plus, as you mentioned earlier, we've both had great experiences with, with Christoph cigars in the past. Uh, yeah, this is in my humidor. So let me, let me tell you what I'm trying to do. Okay. I am trying at long last, after all these years, to teach myself how to retrohale. Oh, I, can't, I have never been able to do it. I have never been successful at doing it. So the retro hail uh, is how you move the smoke out. Remember, you're never inhaling the smoke. You're, you're toasting the palate. But on the exhale, you can basically close the mouth. Some people say you put your tongue to the roof of your mouth and move the smoke out your nose. And you're like, that sounds painful as bloody hell. Uh, probably the first time, <laughs> which can be said for so many things. In this case, wow, what you're trying to do is the nose has so many more receptors. Uh, the, the sensory part of it, you'll get more flavors. You get a better feel and an understanding. I've been trying. I am miserable. Well, see, it. I just did it. And did you really? Is that what you said? Wow. Was that your wow? Oh, you did it. Look at you. And... Did I don't take do you it back often. To your cigarette days? <laughs> oh, what I could, what I would do for a parliament right now. I wouldn't do anything because I wouldn't want a parliament. Uh, but having said that, you kind of, you kind of ah. did that. Your mouth was a little open, though. I like, I look like Puff the Half Magic Dragon. <laughs> Here's my problem with it. And just like anything else, you have to practice and get better at it and get used to it. The only thing I got out of that retro hail was it burns, it burns. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, it's horrible. It burns. Where's Mr. Tinky? <laughs> Anything for a Krusty the Clown. <laughs> so we're smoking. We'll get in uh, to uh, the, the drinking, but it's time, Fingers Malloy, for News of the Week. I don't know if you've heard this, Tony, but apparently there's going to be a solar eclipse. What? It's in all the papers. Oh, my gosh. Well, I did not see it once in Reader's Digest. <laughs> so uh, there's going to be a solar eclipse, and people are absolutely going crazy about this. Uh, in the path of the eclipse, uh, eclipse, you're seeing people fly in from all over to the country to experience the, the what, 10, 10 minutes or so of, of darkness? Uh, if, if that. I, for one, will just wake up at 2 o'clock in the morning. But that's just me. I don't have to travel anywhere. I don't need this hullabaloo. <laughs> Spending thousands of dollars to travel uh, to be a part of the solar eclipse. Well, of course, if you are going to look up at the sun, you need special glasses yes. during the eclipse. And authorities are warning people. Oh, uh, no, no, no. <laughs> don't do it. You don't want me to warn people? You just want me to have them stare at the sun with fake eclipse glasses is what you want me to people do? People really are selling fake eclipse yes. glasses. We, we suck. <laughs> and authorities are warning people about this, and there are ways to tell if they're fake or not. I'm not even going to get into it because uh, you actually need illustrations or anything. I just wanted to put the bat signal out there uh, to warn people that there are fake eclipse glass here's the thing i don't understand 
if you buy the legit ones, it's not like you're investing a ton of money in them. They're like two bucks, right? I've, a dollar? They're not that expensive. Where are you buying the fake ones? Is it like walking up to David Letterman going, hey, want to buy a monkey? <laughs> Is that? Exactly. A guy approaches you uh, wearing a trench coat. Right. Who wants bifocals? Anybody need bifocals? I got them right here. Two for 50 cents. <laughs> So I I don't know. Just be aware uh, when you are purchasing these glasses. That the amount of work it must take to fake solar eclipse glasses. So much work. Yeah. I, the time, the effort, the product. <laughs> these don't even have lenses. Like, it's it's just, it's too much. Don't I know it. <laughs> I just did a visual gag for Tony and nobody else because we're doing radio. Oh my God. <laughs> but you're, you're exactly right. It's and horrible. It is horrible. And, to, and talk about not having a conscience. I'm going to sell people a product that's counterfeit. And there's, there's a possibility that they could have permanent vision damage by using my counterfeit glasses, but ah, I could make a couple of bucks. What does that lawsuit look like? If you can Seriously. find the, if you can find the people who are responsible for making them, I I the, I had caught wind of this story um, the other day. My, my wife actually brought it up to me, and and it, it stuck with me. It's you are no longer the happy hour newsman. Um, <laughs> I was warning people. I want it, people to have 2020 vision. What is it about this story that of everything we may have ever discussed, this is truly depressing. Like, this is a question of uh, how lost we are. Yeah. That this is something that you would fake. This is something that you would scam people out of. If, if guys get the good glasses for the eclipse, make sure you go to a, a store that you know or just go online to fingerseclipseglasses.net. <laughs> fingerseclipseglasses.net. He's got all the latest styles, the selection, and it will be there in time for the eclipse. Fingerseclipseglasses.net. Great. Now I've got to buy that website. Yeah, right away. All IPAs are terrible. Awful. <laughs> They're a shame. They are what my people would call a Shonda fingers, Malloy. I went to school with the Shonda. Tea, drink, smoke. I'm Tony Katz, and that right there is America's favorite amateur drinker, Fingers Malloy. Beer two weeks in a row because there's a very cool fundraiser going on where we where we record at Blend Bar Cigar in Indianapolis. Lauren Frederick joins me right now from Metazoa Brewing, M E T A Z O A, Metazoa Brewing uh, dot com. Uh, they're big in Indiana. They've just started expanding, so it's kind of interesting to see a business that's new but started in 2016 just start to expand post-COVID, in a world where beer sales are going down. Lauren, you have picked a fantastic time to do it all. We we think so, too. <laughs> we are drinking your Trash Panda. This is an actual name, Raccoon on the Label, Fingers Malloy, because nothing says I'm thirsty like the name of a beer called Trash Panda. <laughs> Yep. So um, this is our vanilla latte inspired coffee blonde. Um, we've always really loved it. It's got a little bit of a cult following. Um, there's something kind of cool about a light beer that tastes like iced coffee, basically. Um, right. So a little bit of a, a mind trick. Um, but it's been really, really popular. And it's got a nice kind of roasted coffee note along with some sweetness. Um, and the coffee is local, which is kind of fun. It's from Blue Mines Roasting. Now, you've got a couple. You you have a, a wide array at Metazoa. You've got the nap in the hammock. And, of course, one of the things that's very popular in Indiana, which is Puppy Slumber Party, yes, uh, which is the peanut butter stout fingers. I'll just give you that can right there. Oh, Take that home with you. you. Share it with the kids. <laughs> Don't share it with the kids. Um, we're we're going to get into the beer in, in, in a second. Just open the cans. And they're only in cans, which is like all the trend, all the rage, and has been for a few years. Yep, it's available in draft and in cans. Um, but we do not do any bottling. Is it because the bottle is just too dang much money? Um, in in small part, really, it's for the quality of the beer. So, um, basically, beer's biggest enemy is light, and I guess oxygen as well. Um, so anything you can do to keep the beer in the dark makes it last longer. The quality's better. Um, so an aluminum can blocks light better than a bottle. Alcohol by volume on the Trash Panda. I believe it is. 
5.3. Um, oh, we'll there we go. Yeah. Look at that little. It's beautiful. Yep. So why, why not? Fingers well, are you getting anything on the nose? We do check it up. We check it all. Oh, We're serious people here. Good. Smells like beer. Fantastic. Fingers are low. Are you ready for this? I I am, but I, I have a quick question. Yeah. Uh, you know, usually when you hear something that has kind of a coffee, uh, you know, note to it, it's usually you're talking about porters and stouts. What yeah. made you decide to do this with a blonde ale? So it's a great question. We, um, for a long time, had a year round dark beer. Um, it was actually the precursor to Puppy Slumber Party. And then Puppy Slumber Party kind of became year round. And we realized that during the summertime, even though it's not a very heavy beer, that the psychology of a dark beer, people didn't like it as much in the summer. But yeah, they we still think wanted... those people are terrible. We, that's <laughs> the dream. That's the whole dream yep. for us. So, um, so we decided we would do something that was a little bit friendlier for summertime, but still gave you that kind of sweet coffee character, um, and that nice roasty. Well, roasty. okay. So the, this, I'm probably not the person to start off the review because I just got done drinking about a gallon. Oh, of I'll go in. I'll, I'm, I'm not shy because <laughs> I'm actually getting some fruity notes rather than coffee all right first it's for, you're you're a thousand percent right about the fruity note oh there is something that completely envelops the tongue almost to an you said vanilla uh vanilla latte yep is there a baking spice in here is there a there isn't there is an extract um that kind of gives it that little bit of vanilla sweetness um and then in addition we steep it over coffee um so it's kind of like if you think of like thus tea. why you would get it fruity because coffee is 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 by nature in that way yeah uh, i i am a hundred percent with you fingers that that hits me more fruity than it does coffee not in a bad way but mm -hmm. I, I vanilla latte i would i would make the assumption of, of luscious this is rather subtle it is uh, yep. in there is that based on, when you make that kind of call talking to lauren frederick of metazoa brewing metazoa m-e-t-a-z-o-a -E try and spell that metazoa brewing.com <laughs> um is is that marketing or is that really just where your brewers have the palate a little bit of both. So, um, like I said, we were trying to kind of solve for the people that liked a slightly sweeter beer, but wanted to maybe have a few of them or have it with food and not feel like they had just eaten a meal. Um, mm -hmm. And then additionally, you know, that's kind of the, the marketing piece. And then our brewers are very focused on balance. So you will never have a Metazoa beer that has a crazy amount of bitterness that isn't balanced with malt or a crazy amount of coffee that doesn't have something else to kind of balance right. it. So um, it's we're really... We really want great beer that is nicely balanced and finishes really clean. And in, so. um, I don't mean to interrupt your fingers. What is interesting here um, is that, like, we did a, a brown ale last la last last week, and so that finish is is bitter, and I happen to enjoy that bitter. There is zero, zero bitter. Yes, coming uh, from this, the Trash Panda, which is a vanilla latte inspired blonde ale, inspired, not actually uh, vanilla. Latte. Yeah, there's a crispness yeah. to it. Uh, but I'm curious, you know, Tony brought it up at the beginning of the segment about IPAs, and we kind of want to talk to people. Terrible. In, Absolutely. In your position. Trash. <laughs> when it comes to beer Trash trends. Trash Panda IPA. Yeah. Yep. When it comes to beer trends, uh, is this going to come to an end soon? Because it's maddening to me. I walk <laughs> into a bar, and there are 20 beers on tap, and 18 of them are IPAs. Yeah, I guess I have some good news and some bad news for you, probably. <laughs> um, the good news is that we the newest trend, people are actually kind of coming back to what I would call like classic beer styles. So we're seeing a lot more lagers coming back, um, kind of that clean very simple, easy to drink beer. Um, the the bad news is that still, especially in Indiana, about half of the beer drinkers, especially craft beer drinkers, are looking for an IPA. Uh, oh. So there is still that that's following, and I don't think IPAs are going anywhere. But it's kind of funny. Even people that we work with will start to see them go, "Okay, I either want an IPA or I want a really light lager," and there's not a lot of anything in between. So those are kind of the two. You said Indiana, but is, could this be said nationwide that the trend is still IPA focused? It is IPA focused. I would say um, as we've expanded, we've seen, I mean, Trash Panda is quickly becoming one of our best selling beers in Michigan, um, probably second only to our IPA. So there are markets that are looking for something other than this hop head, crazy, you know, sticky, hoppy beer. Let's talk business. Okay. Uh, don't need to know your sales, <laughs> uh, but we are watching right now, post COVID, a decline in the craft beer industry. Absolutely. And it's not just a small dip. Mm -hmm. We're seeing something craterous. And that's a word I just invented. Congratulations. Meant, uh, meaning <laughs> of the crater fingers. Got it. Um, 
well, well, I, I, I want to get to it. We, we might hold you over to, to talk about this That's fine. in depth in, in 30 seconds or less. Is this, in your view, a temporary blip? Or is this a new market that's going to require brewers like yourselves to rethink the industry? I would say there is definitely um, a temporary component. Things tend to be kind of slip- kind of cyclical. Um, but what we are seeing that's different is the diversification of a drinker. So, you know, years and years ago, people had one type of beer and they were loyal to that. And that's what they drank. And they were a Miller Lite guy or a Bud Light guy. Like that was there was an identity component. And now there's so many options. There's RTDs, there's seltzer, there's craft beer, there's domestic beer, there's RTD some, being ready to drink. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's, you know, your canned cocktails, things like that. Um, so I think there's just a lot more options available and people are dabbling. Um, but I do think there will always be a market for great beer that's well made. And and I don't think, you know, I don't think the beer drinker is going away. Um, so we just have to make sure that we as craft brewers are, you know, evolving and giving, you know, innovation to the customer. And that's Lauren Frederick. Little- it is Metazoa Brewing. Uh I, I have more to ask you. Uh, stay, okay. stay right there. Find everything we do at eatdrinksmokeshow.com. So let's get into the business of beer because the business of beer has become culture. You take a look only at what happened to Bud Light with a marketing plan that was, in, in our view, fingers, I don't think I'm speaking at a turn here, ill-conceived. Would that, be, would that be the best way to put it? That's very fair to say. That's that kind way to put that? That's very fair to say. I could be more aggressive on the subject. That's very fair to say. It's Eat, Drink, Smoke. I'm Tony Katz. That is Fingers Malloy. Find everything we do at eatdrinksmokeshow.com. And don't forget, let's go bourbon and let's go barbecue. Uh, Let's go beer has to come soon. Let's go bourbon. Let's go barbecue. Our two books available at amazon.com. Learn about bourbon. Learn how to make some great barbecue at amazon.com. Let's go bourbon and let's go BBQ. Lauren Frederick, Vice President of Metazoa Brewing, joins us right now. M-E-T-A-Z-O. A Metazoa Brewing.com. We were discussing what's going on with the industry. Yeah. So now I want to dig in because you work the business side, mm-hmm. right? Not so much the, the, the brewing side. I Correct. love that side. I love the art. I love the craft. Even when I'm not a fan of the beer, how someone thinks, same thing is true with bourbon. And, and, and that that level of invention. That's why we love cigars, that level of, of invention. But in the end, one must sell their art. Right. It is one thing uh, to toil over uh, the canvas. You have to get the canvas sold. But the market is playing differently. And you discussed earlier the idea of the splintering of the marketplace, all of the different levels of competition. Um, But you said that the beer drinker is not going away for younger generations, Lauren. The beer drinker is indeed going away. Yeah, or they never existed in the first place. (laughs) Right. Um, Yeah, and there definitely is. There's a lot of trends, especially with um, kind of that Gen Z group coming in, um, drinking differently. They're looking more for um, more for an experience than necessarily to pound a bunch of beers like some people are. You know, and so I think um, she looked directly at you, fingers. Did you see that? (laughs) It's my first beer. (laughs) We ever. We um, no, but it's and that's something that we talk about a lot internally is you can't just give them great liquid. It has to be great liquid plus an awesome experience. Um, We were founded to give five percent of animal five percent of our profits to different animal charities. So, for example, our tap room is very pet friendly. We have a dog park on site. We've kind of created this metazoa atmosphere um in addition to having great beer because it's i mean frankly good liquid's just not enough anymore to capture especially that newer generation so when i, I have no issue with that like like yeah cause-based businesses work uh, uh, we we do uh, a fair amount of 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 our charity work and in, in in fundraising for food pantries and all sorts of things That's great but it's also seen legitimately in in a in a in a world that looks at everything with a skewed eye as gimmicky Right. You you take a look. You, you you got the panda over here and then you got the, the I, don't, I don't even know what that's. It's a sloth. Mm-hmm. It's a sloth right yeah. there. Fingers below. Um, right. So that's how you do your, your your cans, your labeling. Yeah. But that idea that you give five percent to animals, that's enough of a story to make people say that's where I'm going to go. Yeah, I think that in addition to kind of putting our money where our mouth is, as far as the, you know, all of the art on the taproom walls was 
actually created by chimps at Save the Chimps, which is one of our charities. And so everything in the tap room like kind of tells part of our story of, right. you know, hey, you know, this re- this year we're going to cross into the three hundred thousand dollar donation mark. So these are especially given what's happened in the last few years in our industry. We've really kind of stepped up to the plate and said, yeah, this is a lot of money, but we this is part of why we exist. Um, and I think when people come in and they they, you know, get a five dollar beer they believe that a portion of that is going directly to animals. And so we owe it to the customers to make sure that it is. Um, I only bring it up because we see this in cigars. We see this in bourbon. I am, I am hypersensitive to the idea of the gimmick fingers, but just because I am, doesn't mean that people view it that way. They, they may view it and say, that's wonderful. That's where I want to spend. We see this uh, certainly in the world of veteran owned all the time. Yeah. And I never think of that as gimmicky. Well, I, off the top of my head in the 90s there was a local brewery in michigan they came out with a a beer called bad frog beer and on the label uh it was a a a frog giving you the middle finger (laughs) and that was the gimmick unfortunately for them the beer wasn't so good so everybody loved it at the beginning but you got to get uh more from your beer than than marketing and a wise cracky name so yeah and i think that's you know to your point earlier i think having good liquid is i mean that's the price of poker now and it used to be that you know if if it was a fun place and the beer wasn't great nobody really cared but now you have to have good beer to even get in the door and then in addition to that the expectations of what kind of experience you're going to have when you're there or you know how why it's special that's that's where that it's really raised the bar talking to lauren frederick uh, she is the vice president of metazoa brewing m-e-t-a-z-o-a metazoa brewing Dot com. We're drinking the Trash Panda. Real name. <laughs> vanilla in vanilla latte inspired blonde ale. Yes. And fingers, I'm with you on that little bit of 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 fruity more than vanilla e. Um, but f- fine for me and good for a summer day. It's funny. It's almost like I'm going to break this down like I do a cigar as I'm getting into the second third of this beer. That vanilla and the coffee is starting to come out, and that fruitiness is starting to subside a little bit. It's crazy. Maybe it's because I'm getting away from my coffee. <laughs> that could be a little bit of it. I also think as you, you know, have more sips and your more of your taste buds are engaged and things like that, you start to get a little bit more of that complexity, which is nice. We're talking about the the, the business of beer. And yeah. yes, those younger generations were never beer drinkers. Anyway, in your view, right, you're younger than fingers. Uh, we're, we're, we're the same age. You might be a year or two older than me. Um, what what I say? What I say? What's so funny? What's you so got, haha? You got jokes. What is it about younger drinkers that has them more towards the mocktails mm-hmm. and things like that? And how? It's now we're into a really weird play. It's one thing you 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 believe in 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 taking care of animals. You're putting your money where your mouth is, and I think people can respect that like they would with veterans. Mm-hmm. But now you have the goal of taking people who are not drinkers and saying. Look, it tastes so good. Right. Everybody's doing it, right? That's a that's a whole weird. When they're already a drinker, they're like, no, no, ours is better. One thing, right? This is oh, this is a, this is a little bit of kind of pull them in. How does that work with um, younger generations? Yeah, I think I think in large part, again, it kind of comes back to that that experience. Um, but it's definitely something we've had to pivot and look at. You know, again, they're not going to come in and buy f- four beers. They might have one, maybe. Um, but, you know, we have non-alcoholic offerings, um, not that we brew ourselves, but we do offer that in our tap room just because there there are a lot of people that are choosing. They want the fun without but has having there, the ha- drinks. Do your conversations when they get into how do we bring them over to this is a good way to in, in, enjoy an afternoon? How, how t- are those conversations just banging your head against the wall? Not necessarily. Um, and again, we're we're really lucky because we do have things like the dog park, and we have a lot of different you know community partnerships and events but that's and things. A specific that we tap could... room is your yes. You're expanding into Michigan. You're expanding into Ohio. Expanding into I think Illinois or Kentucky. I'm sorry. Yep, Kentucky. Um, you got to reach that 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 larger audience where you can. Yeah, and I think I mean I, I think it all comes back to we're going after somebody that's going to be drinking anyway. You know, I think there, there are people out there that may not want beer or may not be drinking alcohol and that's their choice. And I think there's, there's also an angle of like health consciousness. Um, so, you know, when we look at that, we say, okay, well, you know, people are being more health conscious and they're concerned about 
you know, what they're putting in their bodies. So we for recent, you know, recently we just came out with a light lager. Um, so it's, you know, under 100 calories and it's got a few grams of carbs and it's very it's much um, more approachable if you're kind of paying attention to those sorts of things, um, which is unique in craft beer. I mean, most craft beer drinkers are really about the flavor and they they want it to be great. Um, and and they're not so concerned about how many calories it has. Yeah. And I, I'm I think I'm one of those people. Fingers, are you concerned about the calories right now? Oh, absolutely. I, it's one thing. If you look at me, you could tell <laughs> I'm really concerned about empty calories. Uh, after you're done with this, which you're just about done, are you going to do another one? Okay. Twist no, my arm. I, wasn't, I, w- I was asking. I wasn't offering. Oh, uh, I, I thought you were offering. Forget it. I'll take three. I'll oh, offer. We got more. Thank you. God <laughs> bless you. Lauren uh, Frederick, uh, it is Metazoa Brewing. Metazoa, M-E-T-A-Z-O-A. Uh, in 10 seconds or less, why Metazoa? Um, I think it's the perfect intersection of a solid quality liquid. Um, you know, we won the Great American Beer Festival a few years ago. Um, so, you know, arguably great liquid. And then with a cause. So there's um, kind of a feel good component and you feel great drinking That's something delicious. Lauren Frederick, Metazoa Brewing. Appreciate it. We haven't done news once, fingers. Oh, no, we did do news once. And you so disappointed me with the news of the week. I'm wondering how I'm going to survive. Luckily, there's Trash Panda beer. Mm-hmm. Luckily, there is the Christoph Guardrail cigar. And luckily, there is Eat Drink Smoke Nation whom I love and adore and just want to nuzzle. Yes, I do. And luckily, you have me. It's Eat, Drink, Smoke. I'm Tony Katz. That is Fingers Malloy. Find it all at EatDrinkSmokeShow.com. Fingers, we have no time to waste, no time to lose. It's time for News of the Week. I thought we were going to go over the beer. You want to go over the beer? Yes, because I have noticed something about this trash Panda from Metazoa Brewing. This is a vanilla latte inspired blonde ale. Yes. Not infused, inspired. And I'm inspired the more I drink it, Tony. Really? Yes. Because I got to tell you, when we first cracked this beer and we're drinking it right out of the can. Like men. Like we're in the garage tinkering with a transmission. And as you know, if you've ever met me at all, you've ever heard this show for five minutes. If there's something Tony Katz does, it's tinkers with a transmission in a garage. (laughs) That's Tony Katz. Uh, But what I am surprised uh, about is, you know, we talk about first, third, second, third, final third in a cigar. This is the way this beer is hitting me, because when we first started sipping it, there was like fruity note as crisp. Uh, but I didn't get any hint of vanilla, coffee, none of that. But as I've made my way to the final third, that vanilla and coffee, they've both picked up in what, a big way. Did it say somewhere on it, shake before serving? Uh, I will no, apparently it didn't, but maybe I should have. You think, think that's, that, that's uh, really something you should do before you open a can of beer, right? Is, is shake it well? Is that what you're saying? That's what all the experts say. <laughs> I read that on the internet. You know who said it on the internet? Abraham Lincoln. Oh, there you go. And then it has to be true. Uh, But you know why? Because he was honest. (laughs) Look at you. Nice pull. An honest Abe reference. Wow. News of the week. Hit me, hit me, hit me, hit me, hit me. Okay. Here's the deal, Tony. Oh, God. Once again, I've done my best uh, being America's happy hour anchorman to try to find good news i go into the search engine ask jeeves and i say jeeves give me some good news and my computer laughs at me so i'm done i can't do it anymore i can't do the regular news of the week that we uh, tend to do so i'm going to give you this wendy's has added a new frosty flavor for spring isn't that wonderful it is the orange creamsicle pop frosty Cream, uh, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Orange creamsicle, what? Pop. It does not say pop. I'm just going by the description from the fine folks at People Magazine. It's the orange creamsicle frosty. Thank you. Not pop. No one said pop. People Magazine says the new treat is a mashup of an iconic orange creamsicle pop and a richness of a frosty. I believe they meant an orange creamsicle soda. I think they mean the orange creamsicle pop. You know, you know the little pop-ups. Oh, the, the pop. I, oh, the ice cream. Okay. 
Okay. I thought you meant pop. No. I'm really off base with this whole story, aren't I? Yes, but here's the deal, and here's where I feel like I have failed. Uh, Eat, drink, smoke, nation, and you, Mr. Tony Katz, we should be sampling the orange cream sickle frosty right now. I've had one. Really? And it is magic. It's magic, my friend. It tastes exactly like an orange cream sickle pop. Now, if you are a fan of the vanilla Frosty, I have bad news for you. Because as you know, Tony, uh, fast food ice cream machines, uh, when they haven't broken down for the night, uh, there's a limited amount of space for these ice cream machines. So they had to take one flavor of Frosty away, and they aren't going to take chocolate away. So they took the vanilla Frosty away. Yes. To give us orange cream. You know what? It's only temporary. I approve. I approve, Wendy's. You 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 should have checked with me first, but now that I know it, I am uh, I I am very okay with it. Are you a fan of cream sickles? Um, not per se, but I will try it in frosty form. I'm more than happy. To, I, I am pro frosty in in every situation. Nothing would make me happier than taking an egg McMuffin, which is the perfect food, and dump du- dunking it, yeah. dipping it. Uh, drenching it, coating it, slathering it with a frosty, whether that be chocolate or orange creamsicle dreamsicle. I would argue with you, Tony, that the perfect breakfast sandwich is actually the steak, egg, and cheese bagel, which has been brought back for uh, you know many locations around the country. Did not have it. We've been lucky in Central Indiana, where I'm up to four a week. Uh, the steak, egg, and cheese bagel. You are not. I used to be. Uh, oh, whoa, whoa. used to be. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm lowering the, lowering the carb count a little. Are you back on the Atkins fingers, Malloy? I'm lowering the carb count. I didn't want to make a big deal about it. That's the official denoter of spring when <laughs> fingers <laughs> goes on the on the Atkins. Yeah. Oh gosh, I can't <laughs> wait to see you next week when it's all over. No, it's it's pretty serious. This I'm time. a great friend. Yeah, you are. I'm. What do you mean? What do you mean? It's a pretty serious this time. Uh, it's it's time. It's time to to lose weight. I saw some of the video footage of of what we did at the Premium Cigar Association trade show, and I was like, oh man, who's that fat guy that wandered onto the camera? Oh, it's me. It's me. Oh. <laughs> Maybe I should stop stuffing every carb in my face. Look, uh, we we were together for a few days. You didn't do that. You, I don't think you stuffed every carb in your face. Va- Although, wait, hold on. Now that I think about it, forget I said anything. <laughs> forget I said anything. So now it's serious. Yeah. Uh, do you want me to be like like the the helpful, inspirational friend, or do you want me to shut up about it? I figure that the only time it will ever come up is if you say, uh, "Fingers, what did you have to eat today?" Other than that, I'm not talking about it. I'm not bringing nobody likes to hear the person that is obsessed with their diet every day. Oh, I'm on the Atkins diet. I'm on the 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 keto diet. I'm my doing life carnivore. got so much better when I went gluten free. Oh, my gosh. You will not <laughs> believe. You see what your problem is? See that? It's, you see your posture? It's gluten. It's too much gluten. Gluten's ruining your posture. I don't take any gluten. Look at my posture. It's absolutely perfect. Gluten, gluten, gluten. Bad, yeah. bad, bad. Yeah. And I've done this for three days, and it's changed my life. And it can change your life, too. You start with a whole head of cabbage. <laughs> Nobody needs that. There's the there's the cabbage diet. There's the Hollywood grapefruit diet. There's the cookie diet. Well, wasn't it Penn Jillette? He went on a potato diet where he ate nothing but potatoes for like six months or something crazy like that and lost a ton of weight. Yes, also lost all his muscle mass. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a wonderful way to lose your muscle mass. <laughs> Just eat potatoes nonstop. So, yeah, I, I, I I'm not going to bring it up unless you ask me what i had to eat today which by the way uh today so far uh a link of kielbasa half a new york strip and two fried eggs really yeah and some cheese and some cheese and a deviled egg we did have some cheese and a deviled egg don't ask how that ended up at our table it just did uh the the trash panda from metazoa brewing may or may not be available in in your area is what we're drinking this vanilla latte inspired blonde ale uh, it's fun. 
Don't get me wrong. Uh, but this guardrail from Christoph, the Christoph guardrail with the uh, uh, Brazilian rapper, 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 I hope I'm pronouncing it right. It's a nice stick. It's a nice stick in that eight, nine dollar price point. If that's the case, you can work with this. I will tell you that as we get more into the cigar, flavor is building, right? The strength is building. Still not the full that I thought it was. I thought this was going to be a much bigger cigar. Um, I don't know if I have coffee. I almost want to think, I don't even know if I have nut. I, don't, I, I, I almost think I have leather going on. But it's a nice stick. It's a nice piece. You should check it out. And for Robusto, this is going to, this. we're still going. This is going to take a while. I think I got another hour to go on a Robusto. Five and a quarter inch stick? Come now. This is Eat, Drink, Smoke. Follow Eat, Drink, Smoke on social media, on Twitter, at Go Eat, Drink, Smoke, on Facebook, facebook.com slash Eat, Drink, Smoke, and Instagram, at Eat, Drink, Smoke Podcast.